Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Donald Trump lost again in court today, but, but, but his handpicked judge still left the door open for him to skirt accountability for his crimes. In a brief three-page ruling issued this afternoon, Judge Aileen Cannon denied the ex-president's motion to have his classified documents case completely dismissed, thrown out under the Presidential Records Act. Trump's lawyers effectively argued he had a right to steal the documents containing some of our nation's most highly guarded secrets because he was the president when he obtained them and he could secretly declare them his personal papers if he's so inclined and not tell anyone. Kenna rejected that argument, so that's good because it's an absurd argument. But she ruled in this really insidious way that still gives Trump an out, so to speak. Because in that same order, she also rejected a demand from special counsel Jack Smith to address the underlying question at hand. Can Trump's lawyers make that same ridiculous case about the Presidential Records Act to the jurors? Can they make the case that the classified documents secrets that he hoarded in his bathroom were actually his property to do with as he wishes? That he had a right to decide which top secret documents are his personal property and that such decisions cannot be subject to any scrutiny at all. Again, to be clear, it's a nonsensical argument. It's the literal opposite of the Presidential Records Act's intent and effect. It's not serious. But Judge Cannon continues to act not like a serious jurist. Instead, she is once again bending over backwards to kind of grant legitimacy through omission to Trump's twisted and laughable interpretation of the law. So last month, she asked both Smith and Trump's lawyers to draft instructions for a potential jury in this trial based, again, on that fantastical legal argument. Quote, a president has sole authority under the Presidential Records Act to categorize records as personal or presidential during his or her presidency. Neither a court nor a jury is permitted to make or review such a categorization decision. Although there is no formal means in the PRA by, by which a president is to make that categorization, an outgoing president's decision to exclude what he or she considers to be personal records from presidential records transmitted to the National Archives and Records Administration constitutes a president's categorization of those records as personal under the PRA. Again, what this would mean, the argument would be, despite there's a fact of Presidential Records Act that requires, that states that everything that the government has, right, uh, belongs to the, to the people, that instead, depending on what the president wanted to take or not take, it, that would make whatever is his personal. It's a perversion of what the Presidential Records Act set out to do. Understandably, Jack Smith was not pleased about that order from Judge Cannon, which would only serve to confuse and mislead the jury about their role in this case. He called, correctly, the entire argument, quote, unstated and fundamentally flawed, adding, quote, that legal premise is wrong and a jury instruction that reflects that premise would distort the trial. He then requested that Judge Cannon rule one way or another on whether she thinks, again, this is a serious legal argument. Quote, it is vitally important the court promptly decide whether the unstated legal premise underlying the recent order does, in the court's view, represent a correct formulation of the law. But here's where we come to the rub, because today, Judge Cannon pointedly declined to make such a determination. She effectively thumbed her nose at Smith's request for a prompt decision, writing, quote, to the extent the special counsel demands an anticipatory finalization of jury instructions, Prior to trial, prior to a charge conference, prior to the presentation of trial defenses and evidence, the, tort, the court declines that demand as unprecedented and unjust. Oof. In other words, no, I'm not going to make a decision anytime soon, counselor. In fact, Judge Cannon argues, Sheena might not make a decision until after a jury's been sworn in. And that is the key to letting the guy who appointed her to the bench off the hook. Because... If Judge Cannon decides to let this ridiculous argument go forward, the president has the power to do whatever he wants, jury, those are your instructions. At that point, it's too late for Jack Smith to do anything about it because the Fifth Amendment says you cannot be prosecuted twice for the same crime. And once those double jeopardy protections kick in, there's no turning back. Once there's a jury there, which means if Trump is acquitted because the jury was told a lie about how the law works, there's no way to bring charges against him. That possibility hangs like a potential nuclear bomb looming over all these proceedings. Could be dropped by Judge Cannon at any moment.
she's preserved the option of essentially allowing the ex-president to mount a defense that is based on a fundamentally obvious misstatement of the black letter law, a defense that everyone acknowledges would allow him to get off scot-free. She all but dared the special counsel's office to appeal to a higher court. Quote, as always, any party remains free to avail itself of whatever appellate options it sees fit to invoke as permitted by law. At this point, special counsel Jack Smith might be left with no choice. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.